And I think DSFD, distribute, factor, subtract, divide. Usually it's going to work out for probably 80% of, after you're done doing calculus, that's 80% of the time, that's your algebra steps right there. All right, what rule, so obviously I need to take a derivative. Derivative with respect to what variable? I want to find dy dx. So take an x derivative. I see it because it's on the denominator. So I need to go take the x derivative or take ddx. All right, what rule do I need for this first part? Product, product. product rule. I need power rule also, but I definitely need product rule. So it is some x's times some y's. So derivative x squared. 2x, I don't have to write x prime because this is an x derivative, so I don't have to write dx dx. If I do, dx dx is just 1, so you don't have to write dx dx. Come on. <coughs> 2x, I do have to bring down that second part of the product. So it is 2x times y to the 6 plus x squared times derivative of 6 of y to the 6 is 6y to the 5th power. <coughs> so that's the product rule of the first term. Now I still have a second product rule to go on the second term. So derivative of x is 1. So I get 1y plus x. Derivative of y is not 1. Derivative of y I can either write as y prime or dy dx. So I can write it either way. Oh, I've already messed up somewhere. Is there supposed to be a, a y prime at the end of Yeah, so where should that extra y prime go next to what term? 6y six 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 to the fifth <coughs> needs an extra y prime. So I underlined what I want to solve for. So I like to think of it like a rescue mission. You've got to eliminate everybody else. But you have to use the algebra rules to do so. So we're going to go uh, distribute. There's really no distribution to do here. I can move the 6 to the front. That's not, not terribly helpful. So I'm just going to go right to subtract. So everything that doesn't have y prime, I'm going to subtract. So we get negative y <coughs> minus 2xy to the 6. What's left over? Everything has a y prime in it, so I'm going to factor that, and I'm left with 6x squared y to the fifth. Plus x. So the two terms that I underlined right there, I just factored out everything that wasn't underlined. And I subtracted the other two terms to the opposite side. What is the last <laughs> step? Divide. Divide. So DSFD divide y prime equals divided by 6xy <coughs> to the fifth plus x. Now, in that particular question, they gave an x and a y value. They wanted to know the slope at that particular point. So if you gave me an x and y value, I could plug it in and figure out the actual numerical slope of this graph at that point. What did you do with the x squared that's being multiplied to the 6? Why did it go? Oh. Right right there. No, wait. That's not the, uh-oh. Wrong squared. There we go. So one note about just general uh, graphing. The original equation, can you actually solve for y? You can make a decent effort, but I think it's going to be pretty tough to solve all the way for y. So this is most likely not a function of y. Or not, you can't, most likely cannot write this as y as a function of x. So when you graph it, it most likely will not pass the vertical line test. It won't be a function. You can still graph it. You can still pick x values and carefully get y values, or you can just go to, I think, des 
Fuplot does not do equations, but Desmos does do equations. So if you go to Desmos, you can actually have it graph this out for you. You can look at the point they give you and then see if your slope is accurate. Be a little careful, you may have to change scale. So if you're graphing on Desmos and your Y scale is huge, like goes from like negative 400 to 400 and your X scale goes negative 10 to 10, slopes are gonna look really different than what they actually are. So you gotta pay attention to your scale. So if you give us one like that, that would be our answer on the bottom. That would be Y prime, yeah. So there's, there's Y prime, which of course is <coughs> dy dx. It looks like a backwards alpha. So we did already 3, 9. So we're going to go back to 3, 8. I just didn't want to write these out by hand because it would take an extra minute or so. So, I want you, so we're in 3.8 related rates now. And we're going to do four word problems here. So first example, water runs into... I think you pronounce this conical, which means cone-like uh, tank at a rate of nine feet cubed per minute. So right there, a rate. So that right there rate tells me that's gonna be derivative. The other thing that tells me derivative, oh, I better get a thinner marker. It's per minute, so that's per unit of time. So that right there tells me this is going to be a derivative. Uh, uh, this value is going to be a derivative of something. All right, tank stands point down, has a 10 feet and a base radius of five feet. How fast is the water level rising when the water is six feet deep? So first thing we're going to do is draw a picture of our tank. So it's an upside down cone, also known as an ice cream cone. Easy to draw. Draw, probably don't need that big. Height of 10 feet. <coughs> so I'm gonna to need to start picking letters to represent quantities. What you don't want to do is pick a letter for a quantity that's not changing. So is the height of the tank, in this problem, is the height of the tank changing? So tank's gonna be 10 feet tall. We're not building a larger tank. So tank height's not changing. Base radius of five. And these are all in feet. I'm not going to bother labeling units. And our radius is not changing either of our tank. Now, things are definitely changing, though. So what is happening, we are pouring water runs into. So water is getting poured into this tank at some rate. And how fast is the water level rising when the water is six feet deep? So I'm going to switch to the blue marker, and I'm going to draw the water. So the water is six feet deep at the moment that this problem is taking place. So that was 10. Let's say this is six right here. Now is the height of water changing? It is six feet deep at the moment. But water is being poured into the tank. So is the height of the water changing? Yes. That is changing. <laughs> so we're adding more water. So what I need to do I can use 6, but really, it's better to label this with a variable. I'm going to go h for height. So I'm using h because this height is changing. Tank height is going to be 10 no matter what, unless you come in and destroy the tank or something. But this tank is, is set, but the level of water is changing. So that's h. I need to know how fast is the water level rising. All right, so how fast? They're talking about rate of change. <coughs> so what I'm trying to find, so water level rising. So I want to know what is the change in the height divided by change in time. So that's going to tell me how fast. So I want to find dh dt. So we're going to take a time derivative here. Just like in particle motion, 
if you have a position function, the derivative is velocity or fastness in this case. Fast rate of change. Fastness isn't a word. Depending on how we measure it, the way I measured height, because according to this, the height is height looks like it should be increasing the way I'm measuring it. If I measured this way, it would be decreasing. So it just depends on how on how you want to measure it. So the way I'm measuring, it looks like h should be increasing. So I'm expecting oh, dh dt to be greater than zero. All right, there's another variable here. So this is not written correctly. This should be nine feet cubed per minute. So that should be a volume measurement right there. So that's nine feet cubed per minute. All right, feet cubed is a volume divided by minute. So this is a volume measurement right here. So I need a V is a volume of water. So if I know the height, I want to get the volume of a cone. What other information do I need to start with height, another variable, and volume? What other variable do I need to relate the volume of a cone to the height and something else? Height radius? I need the radius. So I need to know what's the radius. I can label it. So this amount right here, let's use R for radius. So that'll be our radius right there. So now I need a volume equation. Pretty much everything that has a circle in it has a pi. Now a good guess is pi r squared h. That would be cylinder. And now, do you know the magic coefficient that goes in front of this? Is it one third? I think it's one third. I would give you nine out of 10 points for this right here if you did this and then got everything else correct after that. So there's our volume equation right there. One third pi r squared h. I think it's one third. Two thirds is the missing portion of it. Now we have a slight problem because this has three variables in the equation. It'd be really nice to have two variables, not three. So we're going to try to eliminate one of the variables. So let's describe what is nine cubic feet per minute. What variable is this? So feet cubed is a volume, but this isn't just V because it's per minute. So it's dV over dt, change of volume over change in time. So it's whatever units you're measuring in the numerator divided by minutes. So what I don't see anywhere is r. So I know dv dt, I want dh dt, it'd be nice to eliminate r. So let's do our best to get r out of here. So we can't just erase it, we need to eliminate it carefully. And the way we're going to do that is geometry. And I'm going to draw two triangles. We'll draw a blue one and a red one. How are, how are these triangles related? <coughs> I didn't just arbitrarily fill them in for no reason. I think there's some magic geometry word. Similar. So they share a angle. Actually, they share three angles. So that means uh, they are, if you multiply 
uh, the side by some scalar, you'll get the other side. Or the ratio of sides are the same. So however you like to think about that. So I'm going to use the 5 and the R and the 10 and the H. So I'm going to relate those two. So there's a few ways to do it. I could go 5 over 10 equals, so let's call that uh, maybe width divided by the height equals the other width divided by the other height equals R over H. Um, yeah, it will be. But remember, H is changing. So you, if H was not changing, I could just write 6 in here. Uh, but then that would mean really dB dt equals 0. If height's not changing, our volume better not change either. So we're going to plug in the value after we take our derivative. So we haven't, I haven't done any calculus yet, really. Uh, so we need to wait till we take our derivative. All right, so I'm going to eliminate r. So I'm going to solve for r. So r equals 1 half h. So just multiply by h, simplify your fraction, and r is 1 half height. So now we can use this to knock out r squared. simplify this a little bit. So one half squared is one fourth times a third is a twelfth. So volume is pi over twelve h cubed. So we have one equation relating volume and height. And we're ready now to take a t derivative of this whole equation. So the left side's easy, just dB dt equals constant multiple rule, pi over 12 times 3 h squared. But we didn't take an h derivative, we took a t derivative. So we have a dh dt also. Any questions on our derivative or this simplified equation here? So the good news, we want to find dh dt. It's relatively easy to solve for that. I just divide by the other stuff next to it. I don't have to do any like factoring, really. I want to solve for dh dt, so I'm just going to divide by what's in the parentheses right there. And now finally, I'm ready to actually plug in all the numbers. So we've done our calculus, done our algebra, we're just going to plug in values. And this is the first time I can actually plug in 6 for h. If I plugged it in earlier, it would have messed up my derivative. So dv dt was 9 over pi over 4 times 6 squared. And reduce that down. Is that 1 over pi? Seems like 1 over pi is dh dt. Uh, so, Uh, 
And then so your two square cancels your four, and your three square cancels your nine above. In my opinion, it's always better to have smaller numbers to powers rather than bigger numbers. Uh, at least for me, that is more likely to mess me up. To me, yes. not important. To your science professor, very important. So our next example, we have a hot air balloon is rising straight up from a level field and it's tracked by a range finder that's 500 feet from the liftoff point. At the moment, the range finder's elevation angle is pi over four. The angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14 radians per minute. And we wanna know how fast the balloon rising at that moment. So this one, the geometry is a little bit easier in this setup, in this problem. There's our level field. Our balloons are rising at, well, let's not worry about this. Rising straight up. And there's a range finder 500 feet from the liftoff point. And when it's looking at the balloon, it is an angle of pi over four. And we want to know how fast the balloon rising at the moment. So how fast is this vertical quantity changing? So what's a good letter for the vertical quantity? H. H is pretty good. Let's get crazy and go with Y. All right, something else is changing though. Is the angle changing or is this 500 the distance the rangefinder is away from the balloon? That angle is changing. So I need to be careful with that. So I'm gonna call that theta. So I need to give it a name. Theta is a standard name we give angles. You can call it whatever you want, as long as you don't use Y. T is a really bad letter. You don't wanna go with T for anything on these word problems, because T is gonna be your DDT, your time uh, variable. So don't use T on any of these problems. D is another bad letter to use, because you're gonna write D, DT, and you don't wanna have like DD. DT is just too many Ds, so don't use T. Don't use D. All right, how do I relate these three quantities together? And we said straight up, so that's a right angle. <coughs> the 
was a tangent. Tangent of theta equals y over 500. Yep, trigonometry. We got a right angle, a right triangle here. So we got a adjacent opposite, so that's tangent. So we got tan theta. TO opposite adjacent. Now I know the 500 is not changing, so I'm okay leaving that number. I don't need a variable for that. This would be a lot harder problem if that rangefinder was moving or if the balloon was not going straight up. These problems are obviously fake because no balloon is going to rise straight up unless it's in like a sterile environment or something like that. But even then, it's still not going to rise straight up. But in this problem, it sure does. So I have one equation that relates theta to y. So I only have two variables in one equation. So I'm ready at this point to take a derivative. What derivative do I take? I don't know how fast is the balloon rising at that moment? So just from this picture right here, fast is ddt of which variable? Y. So I want to know how's Y changing? So I'm looking for dy over dt. So I'm going to take a t derivative of this equation. So this will see if you're trigonometrically ready for your derivatives tomorrow. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. So two and a half of you sort of knew that. So I know exactly what question that I could put on your midterm. I'm saying I gotta put trig on there and trick a lot of you. So there's, you know, sine and cosine are relatively easy except you have to know where the negative goes. All the other four are a bit more difficult. You can always do it the way that we did it, which is use a quotient rule and take derivatives sort of the long way. You can always go that route on any of the trig functions, from tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. Uh, of course, that'll cut into your total amount of time that you have. So you could use quotient rule and simplify it out. It'd take probably two minutes or so to do that. So derivative of y is just y prime and constant multiple rule over 500. All right, what did I mess up or leave out here? Derivative of tangent theta is secant squared theta. I don't need a quotient rule because that 500 is constant. So what am I missing on the left side? I took a t derivative of some function of theta. I didn't take a theta derivative. So I'm missing a d theta over dt. So I took a t derivative of a theta function. So it's the derivative of that function multiplied by the derivative of theta. Uh, another indication that I need a d theta dt is because they told me a rate right here, the angle is changing at a rate of, so that is d theta dt equals 0.14. All right, I will write in units this problem, but generally I won't write them in. This will make you happy if you're a science or an engineer person. This is rads per min, dy is feet, I think we're using feet somewhere, yeah, feet per minute right there, and when we get down to here, why is, so it's y feet over 
2,500 feet, so the units will cancel on the original equation. Uh, when we're down here, secant squared, theta, d theta dt, that's in rads, we said, per minute equals Uh, y prime, which is really dy dt, so that's in feet per min. Somewhere we got an extra radians. So the feet will cancel the feet. We will have a per minute on the right side. All right, there's a red that's missing somewhere. I don't know. Who cares about units? <laughs> All right, what do I need to solve for? What am I trying to find? dy dt. So we're solving for, or y prime in this case. So just multiply by 500. That's all we need to do. I'll just write theta prime to be lazy. Equals y prime. All right, theta is 45 degrees, or pi over 4. Sigma squared is 1 over cosine squared, pi over 4. Theta prime is 0.14. So cos squared of pi over 4 is 1 over square root 2. Square it is 1 half. Reciprocate it is two ones. So we got a thousand times 0.14 that moves our decimal place twice. 140 is y prime. And if you want units, this is whatever we said feet per minute. So related rates, you need some knowledge of volumes. You're going to need some areas. You need to always remember your SOHCAHTOA, your trig, right triangle trig. Uh, and the other one is distance formula. So those are the basic types of formulas or equations that you need to know. All So next up is a police chase. So I have a police cruiser approaching a right angled intersection from the north. It is chasing a speeding car that has honed the corner and is now moving straight east. When the cruiser is six tenths of a mile north of the intersection and the car is eight tenths of a mile to the east, the police determine with radar the distance between them and the car is increasing at 20 miles per hour. If the cruiser is moving 60 miles per hour at the instant of measurement, what is the speed of the car, the other car? So we have an intersection, right angled, 
and it's lined up north and east. Oh, that's convenient. It looks just like coordinate axes. So a police cruiser is north by 0.6, and the car is east by 0.8. And we want to know the distance between the two. We have information about that. So it's tempting to use D for distance, but I said don't use D because you're going to write DDT. So I don't want to use D. You could use a capital D if you want to. Uh, let's go H for hypotenuse. I think that'll be nice. Let's call it H. So what's a good variable for this distance right here? Too many brain cells. X. It's a good variable for this distance. Y. All right, very good. So how do we relate X, Y, and H? We will be taking a derivative, but we're going to go Pythagorean theorem right here. X squared plus Y squared equals H squared. So let's write down what we know, all the values we know, and all the values, uh, and the one value that we want to find. So we'll write down what we know, and we'll start from the beginning. First number I see is 0 0.06 miles. So what is 0 0.06 miles using the variables that we have? So y is 0 0.06 miles. Or 0.6 miles. Who cares about units? All right, what is the next number? 0 0.8. What number is, what uh, value is 0.8? That is our x. Now remember, these cars are moving, so I can't just use the number. I have to keep the variable until I take derivative. Then I'm free to uh, plug the values in. All right, next number is 20. Now this one's a little tricky. The police term with radar that the distance between them and the car is increasing at 20 miles per hour. So the per hour, or per time, means derivative. So what does that 20 equal? So that's how the hypotenuse, or the distance, is changing. So that's dh dt. Uh, last number I see is 60, which is also a rate, miles per hour. So that's going to be a derivative. So 60 is a derivative of what variable? Dy dt? Yeah, so that's our police uh, speed, or our change in y. What is wrong with dy dt equals 60? and the way that I've laid out our triangle here. Is Y increasing or decreasing? Which way is the police car driving, up or down? Decreasing. It's driving down. So the way I labeled it, this should be negative 60. Because that Y value is decreasing as they're driving downwards. It's a little bit strange. The way I drew it, the X dx dt should be increasing, driving away from the origin. All right, so what's the speed of the car? So I want to find dx dt. So I want to know how is x changing? How is the car, how fast is the car driving away? So we do have three variables in one equation. However, I know x value, I know y value, and I know two derivative values. All I need is just the third derivative value. So I don't have to, in this case, eliminate any uh, variables. All right, so we're just going to take a t derivative now. This is super easy. We have 2x, x prime, plus 2y, y prime equals 2h, h prime. I can divide everything by 2, knock out all the 2's.
and I want to find dx dt, which of course is x prime. So let's go ahead and solve for x prime. So we have h h prime minus y y prime divided by x. So let's plug in all the values that we have now. So we got a problem, I don't know h. I do know y and I do know x. How do I find h? Pythagorean theorem. So we've written that equation on the board already. All I have to do is figure out by plugging in the two values, what is h? And I'm gonna go with the positive version, not the negative. So I also need to find h. So we got h equals square root x squared plus y squared, 0.6 squared plus 0.8 squared. No, oh, there's only one. Very nice. Is that right? That seems too easy. That's okay? All right, h is one, d, h, d, t was 20, minus y was point, is that point six? Point six times y prime was negative 60, divided by x was 0.8. So we got 20 plus 36 over 8 tenths. <coughs> so that's 56 times 10 eighths or 5 fourths. What is 56 over 4? 14. 70? So that was our somewhere, x prime or d, dx dt is 70 and our units are miles per hour. Any questions on this problem? This is not on your midterm tomorrow. So related rates will be either quiz next week or final exam. We'll have one more problem to go through, and then we'll be getting into uh, applications of derivatives that, just to warn you, go relatively quickly. So we'll be through chapter four in about a week or so.